All the Nickelodeon fans better show out for this video. It's time to give one of the all-time greatest kids networks some worthwhile attention. Sadly, it's not necessarily the most positive attention. Many great shows have come and gone on this channel, but some of these series are canceled for flat-out unjust reasons. These are the cancellations that haunt fans to this day. Get ready to open up some old Nickelodeon traumas on this countdown from The Binger. Studio execs over at the Orange Behemoth never guessed that a show about babies going on adventures would be a hit. Rugrats didn't stay overlooked for long, though, and quickly became one of the most popular series of all time. The stable of Tommy, Chucky, Phil, Lil, Kimmy, and Dill proved to be an icon of Nickelodeon. The show lasted 13 years. Over that time, the creative team produced nine seasons of content, and that's not even including the movies. Seriously, Rugrat fandom runs deep, which brings up the big question, how does a show with all that support run out of gas? There are many answers out there, but one appears more true than the others. The fact is that the studio thought they were oversaturating the viewer. Yup, it's a simple belief, but it proved to be unfounded. Let's break it down a little more. Rugrats received a spin-off late in the show's run. The show was called All Grown Up, and many fans remember this show as a success. The two series paired together like peanut butter and jelly. However, Nick thought that the fans would grow tired of seeing so much of these characters. Their solution was to drop the Rugrats. It worked for a second, but then it turned out people don't like sandwiches with just jelly on them. So that's the story of how Nickelodeon went from two great shows to zero in no time. Fans of the early days of Nickelodeon could always count on the big three. They were Doug, Rugrats, and The Ren and Stimpy Show. Of course, it was Ren and Stimpy that most kids were probably banned from watching. Every children's network has that one show. The show did prove to be a success for its limited run. The dark humor and stylized animation helped the show stick out amongst the other shows. Not everyone loved the mad chihuahua and the dim-witted cat that accompanied him, but there was enough support in the ratings to keep the show alive. Nothing good lasts forever, though, and Ren and Stimpy got the boot from the network after five seasons on the air. The problem cited was the inability to make deadlines. After three seasons, the show's original creator, John Crick Falusi, was let go from the project for failing to get his shows in on time. The tricky part was that the shows were often late due to the long approval process. The adult humor and mature antics featured in the storylines led every episode down a long review path. It was the executives punishing the creator for their own oversight. Ren and Stimpy received a last gasp of air on Spike for three episodes. However, that channel cut the cord on the show for the same reason. If given the time to work out episodes and develop their flair, Ren and Stimpy could have grown into something grand. The show is now a cult hit, with fans all over watching reruns constantly. We'll give Ren and Stimpy this. If you're going to go out, at least go out in style. This show can certainly say that it did that at least. Fans of this show were counting on it making some kind of appearance on this list. Invader Zim, despite its short runtime, is considered a quintessential viewing experience for any fan of Nickelodeon. It's become completely synonymous with the brand. It's actually sort of ironic how that turned out. For those unfamiliar, Invader Zim is about an alien named Zim from the planet Urk. Zim's goal in life is to conquer Earth as an alien invader. He's accompanied by his not-totally-there sidekick, G.I.R. G.I.R. is a robot with a few loose wires and a habit for making Zim's life harder. If that also sounds like an interesting concept for a television show, it's because it totally is. The target audience for Invader Zim was older kids. That idea alone is enough to make most studios wary of purchasing a product. Most shows are targeted to a younger demographic on these channels. The audience is likely to stay viewing the show for longer. Older kids will grow out of the fad quicker. This decision ultimately led to the series' downfall. The show lasted one full season. Tons of episodes for the second season never saw the light of day. That's the true injustice of this entry. The ratings did decline for the show, but that was expected with the target audience. However, budget problems marked the show's production schedule and made creating the product a problem. Nickelodeon canceled the show in the middle of the second season and never gave Zim a proper send-off. It's tragic. Zoe 101 was the wax wings Nickelodeon strapped on its back as it flew too close to the sun. If you're not into mythological metaphors, then think of it a different way. The studio put a lot of eggs into the Zoe 101 basket only for the basket to spill over at the first sign of success. The show was one of the most expensive productions for any children's network ever, which tends to be the case when the entire series is shot on location in Malibu, California. Still, for a short time, the risk proved to be worth it for the producers. Everything was going well until the show finished up its fourth and final 
final season. The controversy starts here. Many fans believe the finale given to viewers in May of 2008 was not the real finale that the studio had planned, hence why it's on this list. Many argue that the studio rushed an ending due to their star's change in life plans. However, the initial contract with the star was set to end after four seasons. It's likely that Jamie Lynn Spears decided not to renew after production wrapped up. The show already had a natural endpoint, so the executives at Nickelodeon didn't want to push the point home. A large part of the confusion stems from the clip show shown after the finale that left many fans believing that the showrunners intended for there to be more episodes. The messed up part about this show's cancellation is that it never was canceled. But yet the controversy continues. The boy genius who was prone to brain blast became a fan favorite for many Nickelodeon viewers. His debut movie was an incredible debut and kept momentum rolling when the show finally aired. To many, Jimmy Neutron is one of the most successful modern Nicktoon shows. His offbeat adventures and wide cast of friends and enemies made for exciting episodes. Every story was unique. Viewers could count on Jimmy Neutron feeling like a change of pace from the normal, especially with the unique animation style. Yikes, yeah, about that animation style? It proved to be a huge problem for the studio that created the show. They needed a large team of graphic design artists to animate each show. The show was incredibly expensive to create, but the success of the content kept the production team afloat. Then came the one movie that changed everything. Yes, we're talking about Ant Bully. Many people probably forgot that this movie existed, which is why it bankrupted the studio. Seriously, Jimmy Neutron did nothing wrong. The creators were just in a perilous situation financially. They made a bet on Ant Bully succeeding, and it didn't. They were forced to close up shop, and that was the end of Jimmy Neutron. At least Nickelodeon isn't the bad guy this time, right? Some say that without Victorious, there would be no Ariana Grande. To be fair, talent will find its way on screen or onto the stage one way or the other, but still, there might be some truth to this statement. This show gave a lot of stars, including Victoria Justice, a place to shine. The controversy is in the reason behind its cancellation. You see, Nickelodeon never gave a true account of what happened to this show. It just went off the air without a whisper of why. When that happens, it leads to nasty rumors. Some Victoria fans claim that Ariana Grande's spin-off needed more room to grow, so the studio execs canceled the show. Sure, that may be the case, since they did do that to the Rugrats as well. Others contend that record sales were taking a massive dip for the show, so Victorious was canceled before it became too costly to keep up. Again, there is evidence that this might be the case too. The messed up part of all of this is the need to search for a real answer. Instead of being transparent, the studio simply pulled the plug on a solid show without providing a reason. Now, fans of Victoria Justice and Ariana Grande are in this heated debate over which which star caused the series to go under? Victorious should be celebrated, but instead it's the subject of a heated debate. Watching As Told by Ginger go off the air was a true tragedy. This show is a gem that not everybody got to appreciate while it was on television. For some viewers, this is your first time hearing about this show. Do yourself a favor and go watch an episode or two. As Told by Ginger was targeted at teenagers going through a big part of their life. Ginger was trying to grow up and change her social image, like thousands of real-life teenagers do every day. That's why the show remains relevant today and still holds a small cult following online. One of the big parts of the show's style was the design. Every episode, the characters wore new outfits, their hairstyles changed, and their looks would vary. It was about making these characters feel like they truly lived in this space. There was nothing episodic about As Told by Ginger. Sadly, it's a big reason the show didn't make it. It takes more labor and hours to create a character from scratch each episode. Oftentimes, the show would be crunching time and working with a huge demand. The ratings needed to justify the show's run continuing never came. Nickelodeon was forced to cancel the show after three seasons. As told by Ginger will always be its own unique comet that zipped by the Nickelodeon universe for just a flash of a beautiful moment. Nat and Alex Wolf proved that they were destined to be stars with the Naked Brothers Band. First, the movie proved to be a huge success, and the praise led to three seasons of content for the two brothers. It goes without saying that this series always felt like a weird fever dream that only true fans remember. However, the Naked Brothers Band was a real show, and it truly focused on the lives of these two young boys. The setup is an immense challenge for any studio to pull off, especially as kids' content. The mockumentary style was in at the time, but you can't expect children from the ages of 6 to 11 to grasp the concept. Many of their fans didn't quite understand the fictional aspects of the show. Yes, the two brothers were actually creating music, and a lot of their real-life friends were included in the show. 
The drama wasn't real, though, and many kids watching didn't understand that part. However, the show's interesting style didn't lead to its cancellation. It's actually a lot more real. When the Wolf Brothers signed on to star in the show, their contract required them to keep up with their education. The filming of the show would not interfere with their schooling. As the show grew in ratings, it became harder to keep the show from growing. It was either film more episodes or keep up with education. It's not clear how the sides negotiated the full end of the series, but that aspect was heavily tied into it. The mockumentary style cost a lot to maintain, and producing only a dozen or so episodes every year wasn't going to make the show profitable in the long run. Another show bit the dust, sadly. Clearly, the financial side of the business plays a huge part in the success of these shows. That's no secret. Here, though, it makes sense. The show needed the kids to grow up too fast if it was going to make any money. That idea was too much for any party involved. All right, let's play Crazy Car to take us home. Uh, just kidding, we don't have the rights to that song. Um, just hum it to yourself instead. Well, did we forget one of your favorite shows from Nickelodeon's past? Be sure to bring it up in the comments down below. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to The Binger and like this video. There's always more where this came from, so tune in again soon for more content.